Oakland Alameda County Coliseum in Oakland, California. CBS Sports presents the Minnesota Vikings versus the Oakland Raiders. Hi, everybody. Ben Scully along with Alec Hawkins. Welcome to Oakland. It's kind of overcast. There's a 40% chance of showers. And already one decision has been made. New England defeated Miami. Consequently, Oakland, by winning today, can be the wild card. So there's a lot on the line. But the Minnesota Vikings come in, and a lot of people are doing a lot of guessing about the Vikings. Well, they've got to, because Bob Lee has been their starter since Fran Tarkin uh, was injured. Last week, Tommy Kramer came in with 11 minutes to go in the ball game, threw three touchdown passes, no interceptions, has looked fantastic for the Vikings. There's a number on Tommy Kramer that he has been quarterback while the Vikes had nine possessions of the ball, and they have scored in six of those nine sequences. So evidently, number nine has the touch of a winner. Yes, sir, and the veterans have accepted him from the first day of training camp. He hadn't acted like a rookie at all. He just came in and made his presence felt. One problem that Kramer and the other Vikings will have to get over, and that will be the residual effects of the Super Bowl. After all, Oakland kind of pushed them all over the lot the last time they met, and they've got to forget that and start anew. Well, you've got to feel like they're a very proud veteran team. They, they realize that uh, they were embarrassed in the Super Bowl, and it's got to have some kind of psychological effect. But you, you, to talk to the Vikings, you wouldn't know because they disregard it. They say, we have to win next week for sure. Well, right now down on the field, we can take a look at the captains of the respective squads, and in a moment, we'll get the ball game underway. Again, we'll repeat, the Raiders can clinch the wild card by winning today, or... Since New England won, the Raiders could afford to lose to the Vikings today and then be Kansas okay, City to get the wild card. Call it in the air, please. Call it. Heads. 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 It is a tail. They want the ball. Just like this. Good game, gentlemen. So Oakland losing the toss of the coin. Bud Grant, implacable as usual. You can't tell very much about him. And on the other side, a much more explosive John Madden and summing his ball club up. And all around the ballpark, the flags proclaiming the fact that Oakland, the world champions. The officials for today's game, Freddie Wyatt, the referee, the umpire, Tom Hensley. And then you have Leo Miles, Don Orr, Jimmy Rosser, and Fred Swearingen. The weather, as the breeze picks up and ripples the world championship banner, temperature 58 degrees, humidity 75%. Wind 12 miles per hour out of the south-southeast, a 40% chance of showers, and for that matter, it is raining right now in Santa Rosa, about 25 miles away. We need so much rain out here on the coast. I know everybody's happy to see rain. That's right. Oakland waiting to see about Fred Wyant teeing up the ball and getting this underway. Now Willie Brown comes out to talk, so for the moment, Manfred Moore is deep for Minnesota. He's a boy who started the year with Oakland and now finds himself with the Vikings. For the Vikes, of course, they have a big ball game. There is Sammy White. Sammy White was at the other end of that dramatic 69-yard pass from Tommy Kramer that pulled out the ball game against San Francisco. But there is still some indecision down on the field, and we'll wait and see. Jim Marshall comes out along with Mick Tinglehoff. It gives us a moment to tell you about some of the veteran bikes. For instance, Tinglehoff, number 53, will be in his 223rd consecutive game. George Blanda played in 224, but the record holder will be defensive end Jim Marshall, who will be in his 249th consecutive game. Apparently, in the toss of the coin, someone got mixed up down on the field, and Oakland evidently had won the toss, and they are going to receive. So there was a considerable amount of confusion. Minnesota thought they had won, and they were receiving. Oakland was all set to kick off, and then Bankson was the one who let out the holler, no. Deep right now will be Carl Garrett, number 31, and with him, you begin. There's Garrett. Oakland banged up a little bit. They have deactivated Rich Jennings, and they brought in Jimmy Warren as a seventh cornerback. So we finally got it squared away as they tee the ball up on the 35, and here we go. Fred Cox, ready to kick off for Minnesota. Cox does not get 
much of a kick, and Carl Garrett will take it inside his 10 to the 25, and necktie brings him down at the 30-yard line, where Oakland will put it in possession, first and 10 from their own 30. Here are the boys who figure to be at the other end of Kenny Stabler passes, Cliff Franz, Fred Boletnikoff, and the great tight end Dave Casper. You know what many better than that group? Kenny Stabler with his two great running backs who also block exceptionally well for each other, Clarence Davis and Mark Van Egan. And up front, Shell, Upshaw, Dalby, Beeler, and Lawrence playing for John Vela. Cliff Branch is wide left. Bolitnikoff is wide right. First and 10 from the 30. Mark Van Egan on a flag on the play just as he hit the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at Minnesota now. They will be asked to do what they could not do in January, hold Oakland. It'll be Eller, Sutherland, Page, and Marshall up front. And Page and Marshall took a terrible licking the last time they met. The linebackers, Blair, Seaman, and McNeil, emphasis on Seaman. He'll have to read Kenny Stabler's mind. At the corners, Holy Nate Wright and Bobby Bryant, 15, Jeff Wright and first Paul down. Krauss at the safeties, and the first penalty of the day goes against center Dave Dalby, guilty of holding. Now that puts the ball back on the Oakland 20-yard line. Bob Lee, who had to wait his turn behind Tarkenton, now finds himself waiting his turn behind Tommy Kramer, perhaps. Van Egan unable to get anywhere as he banged into his own left guard, Gene Upshaw. Waiting, wasting no time in going to the left side. They had so much success with say, last year in the Super Bowl. Gene Upshaw and Art Shell, just two great blockers. They outweigh Jim Marshall and Alan Page something like 40 or 45 pounds per man. Fred McNeil did a very good job of coming up and actually pushing Upshaw back into the ball carrier. And McNeil is the only man to ever block a Ray Guy punch. You might remember he did that in the Super Bowl. So Kenny, for the first pass of the day, and he goes to his backfield man, Mark Van Egan, and he's not quite back to the 30-yard line, so he still has a good 10 yards to go. Matt Blair making the hit. Kenny Stabler, almost impossible to determine what he's going to do. Puts no type on himself whatsoever. He's in a situation, he never lets himself get in these long yardage situations. He'll give, take what you give him, particularly this year. He's going more and more to the short stuff, which he throws so well. Van Egan having just a sensation of the year. Well, they started on the 30. The holding penalty pushed them back to the 20. Now they have a third and 11. Stabler, a change of pace. Whoa! Grant. He beat Bobby Bryant. Goes to the outside, and Kraus cuts him down to the 42-yard line. You see Kenny Stabler pumping the football, trying to throw those defensive free safeties out of position. Cliff France, all the speed in the world. He's only been averaging about 15 yards a catch. That's low for him. But they've been running the ball a little more often. You see him beating Bobby Bryant that time. This guy turns it up. It's all over. Litnikoff helping out there a little bit, getting in the way. So undaunted, Stabler has not had much of a passing number in the last three games. He's only completed 41% of his passes, but he comes out now throwing a big completion to Brand. First and 10 from the 41 of Minnesota. Here goes Davis. Clarence Davis is a remarkable ball carrier, especially when you think that in all of his carries this year, plus the fact he has caught 15 passes, he has not fumbled. That would be 169 carries. In addition to that, he is an excellent blocker. Gene Upshaw told me that he was probably the finest blocker in the ball club, regardless of position. He's having his best year. He's gained over 700 yards this year. That's high for him. So it'll be second and six from the 37. As Stabler has his ball club on the move. Politnikoff is right and Brands left. A draw to Clarence Davis, and he's stymied at the 35-yard line. Carl Eller, number 81, and of course that's a familiar name. Number one draft choice way back in 1964. There's the big guy having played 14 years. He has 11 sacks thus far. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. Third and four for Stabler. And he goes to Van Egan with Davis out in front blocking for him. And he is very close to the first down, just about at the 30-yard line. So we'll see. Yep, he picked it up. Once again, let's look at that left side of that Oakland offensive line. 
That's where the game's going to be played. Oakland, a left-handed team in the first place, chiefly because they got a left-handed quarterback and they got great personnel on that side. But they outweigh the Minnesota Vikings on that side, something like, as I said, about 40 pounds per man. That's where they'll be going all afternoon until they don't find any success there. They haven't had any so far. The one big difference, as pointed out before the game, Fred McNeil is on that right side instead of the veteran Wally Hilgenberg, who was there during the Super Bowl. Van Egan barreling his way to the 25-yard line. Mark Van Egan had picked up 1,090 yards rushing, so he needs 10 yards today to pass Marv Hubbard, who had 1,100. And right now he has 12 yards to break Hubbard's record. That was set in 72 in the Oakland record book. Of course, everybody knows he went to school at Colgate, but have you ever seen so many Ivy Leaguers in the game? After watching two games yesterday, it seemed like the whole league is composed of people from the Ivy League. Second and five. The Raiders, remember, started on their own 30. And here goes Garrett inside Pierce. Good block. Flag go as he goes out. There's a flag down on the field inside the 25-yard line. A very good block that time by George Beeler. Opened up, but let's wait on the call. And they they can run to the right side as well. Henry Lawrence is the right tackle, number 70. John Vella, the regular, has been hampered with injuries most of the year. There you see Casper, one of the better tight ends in football. A good block by Beeler, as you said. Carl Garrett turning it up. He's been a steal, been well-traveled. He started with New England, with Chicago, and then with the Jets before he came here. And what that was was a large yellow piece of paper that blew onto the field. It was not a flag. It is first and 10 now from the 16. Here goes Mark Van Egan to the 10-yard line. So he picked up a quick six. You know, the Raiders have been known through the years because of Kenny Stabler and all the good passers they've had out here as being a, a throwing team. But this year, they've gone more and more to the run. For the Minnesota Vikings defensively, they are number six in total defense. They have been asked now to hold an Oakland ball club that comes here breathing fire, second and four from the ten. Remember, an Oakland victory today, and they have won the wild card since New England beat Miami. There goes Davis inside the five for a first down. It'll be first and goal, Oakland. Lawrence Davis, number 28. Let's watch how these two running backs block for each other. Van Egan sealing his man inside. Put McNeil to the inside. They was fine in the running room. I think it's interesting to point out that although they are, uh, Minnesota is sixth in total defense. They're 13th against the run, Then Everybody's having success running against them. And you can see how emotional it's Bud Grant is, as usual. Bankston now a tight end on the right side with Casper on the left. And the running backs, Van Egan and Davis. It's Van Egan driving down to about the two-yard line by the time they unpile. So it'll be second and goal from the two. Matt Blair, number 59, figures to be very busy all day making tackles. He's a big play player. He blocked a lot of kicks for him last year and again this year. He's got four blocked kicks this year so far. Last year, among other things, he had five recovered fumbles, two interceptions, two block conversions, and a blocked field goal. So here's something. Matt Blair, when you see the ball, you'll see 59 right around it. So second and goal from the two. Bankston now on a wing on the left side. Van Egan goes through. Touchdown. Fumbled, I believe, after the whistle. However, the play was dead. And Mark Van Egan bangs it over. His seventh touchdown rushing of the year. So that first series. Let's take a look at it now. Having a sensational year. Was the first runner to break 1,000 yards or better in the AFC. Over that left side, and it's predictable. Art Shell and Gene up, so you just, when you got people like that, you got to run behind them. So now coming in and asked to kick it for the extra point is Errol Mann. Time out for the moment. You asked an interesting question, Hawk, about why they picked Errol Mann up. I thought it was interesting because Al Davis has a reason for everything he does. Number one, they have a grass turf here, and he had one in Detroit where he kicked there for so many years. He'd been used to kicking in the Chicago Stadium. They had a big game coming up. We'll talk more about Al Davis. He's very interesting. Errol Mann, 10-year veteran, sends it through. And so the Oakland Raiders have asserted themselves nine minutes and five seconds to go in the first quarter. And the Oakland Raiders, seven. The Minnesota Vikings, nothing. That drive, you remember, started on the opening kickoff. The only confusion was who won the toss. 
Oakland started on their own 30. A holding penalty set them back to the 20. And then Stabler just moved his ball club downfield relentlessly until Mark Egan punched it over. So Egan, his seventh touchdown rushing, and the Minnesota Vikings are hurting immediately by a ball club that just chewed them up in the Super Bowl, 32 to 14. And the Vikes will have to rally themselves immediately, or Oakland will liable to dump them in the bay. And John Madden and Kenny Stabler already off on a high note. John Madden is very sensitive about the fact his TV appearance. I talked to him the other day about it. He said, you're not going to be one of those guys that makes reference to how, uh, what I look like on television. And I said, not me. It looks like... Looks like he runs at Texaco Station right outside of Arkadelphia, Arkansas. By the way, so with nine minutes and five seconds left to go in the first quarter, Ray Guy will kick off for Oakland. Standing deep for Minnesota as Guy is ready. There is Manfred Moore, who was on the Oakland ball club last year having been picked up from Tampa Bay, and he's now with Minnesota. Started out in San Francisco. Get the turner out there. And Watch with Moore from the five-yard line. Tomley picks it up at the 10, and is upended shy of the 15-yard line, and he took a pretty good lick. Terry Robisky down there on the tackle. The NFL on CBS next Saturday. The Los Angeles Rams and the Washington Redskins at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. A lot of you folks, I'm sure. So Washington pull that one out and hold on to defeat the Cardinals yesterday. 12.30 Eastern Saturday. The Rams and Washington. Now Minnesota trying to regroup first and 10 from their own 14. And young Tommy Kramer is the quarterback. McClanahan and Foreman. And it's Chuck Foreman. Here are the men who figure to handle the ball. Ahmad Rashad, Sammy White, and Stu Voigt, the tight end for Minnesota. The backfield with the quarterback, Tommy Kramer, Brent McClanahan, and Chuck Foreman. Up front, Riley, Goodrum, Tinglehoff, White, and Gary. Second and eight from the 16-yard line. Seven to nothing, Oakland in the early going. Sammy White is wide left. And Tucker, a tight end on the wing, outside Voigt to the right. The whistle is blown, and it is a cut by Otis Sistrunk of Oakland. Oh, Otis. Otis has been troubled a lot this year, as many of the Raiders have with injury. He's about 80% well, but still playing today. Liking very sluggish, it looks like today. There's a handoff there, and, well, it's just a poor exchange. He never got control of the thing. Can't tell whose fault it was on that. New quarterback, that'll often happen. So Minnesota immediately gives the ball up to Oakland. The Raiders not only leading 7 to nothing in perfect position now to put a big crack in this ball game, and we're not even halfway through the first quarter. First and 10 on the Minnesota 16. Van Egan and Davis. Bletnikoff is right, branch left. And there goes Van Egan, fouling to the 10. All right, we've been telling you about what a good blocker Clarence Davis was, number 28. A small boy, but look at him. Let's watch and see how he comes out this time. Right on his back, wouldn't it? He's going to follow his friends. Number 70 coming into the picture, Jim Marshall, that you've seen for so many years. Gracious, he's been playing forever, hasn't he? Forever in translation to 18 years for Jim Marshall. It is second and four from the 10-yard line. Branch in a slot right. Van Egan picked up by Bobby Bryant and goes down at the 11-yard line. Good play by veteran Bobby Bryant, who's had nine years. But Grant coming in here trying to forget the Super Bowl, and as he said, this is not one of those things that we're going to come back and try and avenge a Super Bowl. John Madden has his ball club snarling already. They win today. They've got a lock on the wild card. Both great coaches with contrasting styles. Nowhere near similar in personalities, but both winners. Third and five from the 11-yard line. Stabler going to left-hand it up. High down in the corner of the goal. Oh, all alone. Cliff Branch made it look easy. That's his fifth touchdown pass of the year. Well, sir, the Vikings have had trouble rushing the passer all season. You cannot give Kenny Stapler, as the R Los Angeles Rams found last week, you put a rush on him, he might throw some interceptions. He's thrown 20 this year, but you give him time to sit back like that, 
he will pick you to pieces because he is one heck of a thrower, as everybody knows. Cliff Branch, well, you've seen him play too often for me to tell you anything about him. The closest man to Cliff Branch was Jeff Wright. He was about five minutes away by phone. So Arrow Mann will now try to make it 14 0 Oakland. And he does. So the Oakland Raiders capitalizing on a Brent McClanahan fumble, cash in on a touchdown pass to Branch and lead 14 0. Ray Guy, picking it up for the world champion Oakland Raiders, who are acting every inch the role, certainly against Minnesota, the team that they clobbered in January. Well, next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents highlights of the WBC World Welterweight Championship fight, Carlos Palomino and Jose Palacios. Then you'll see the National Hot Rod Association World Championship, Shirley Muldowney, Don Garland. Finals of the United States Professional Arm Wrestling Championship and the final event of the World's Strongest Men competition featuring the tug of war. All coming up next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Manfred Moore waiting for the kick. It's down to the five-yard line, and he'll try and move it to the 10, and down he goes on a wave of black shirts. And so Minnesota first lost the toss, gave up a touchdown, fumbled the ball away for another touchdown, and now they're in trouble as they start. And there was the Oakland drive, three plays, 15 yards, recovering the McClanahan fumble, the play made by Otis Sistrunk, a minute and 15 seconds, and it is 14 to nothing Oakland. And how about this? Historic. Tampa Bay will finally win one. They were 0-26. They'll win it 26-0. And Hank Graham's going to be committing suicide about mm. now. Tommy Kramer. To the left side, overthrows Ahmad Rashad. There he is, Ahmad Rashad. He's been going to travel around a little bit. Started with St. Louis. Ended up last year starting the season with Seattle and was traded over for a number four draft choice. And that's a pretty cheap price for a guy with his ability. Last week had his, probably his best week with seven catches for over 100 yards. His most productive Sunday of the season. Well, Tommy Kramer had to come in here last week behind by three touchdowns. He must wonder if Minnesota ever gets in front. He's waiting for it. He gets behind 24 nothing before he cranks it up. Second and 10 from the top. Recovered by Minnesota. And falling on the ball is Goody, as they call him, Charles Goodrum. So Minnesota has fumbled twice and given up the ball once, and they were saved that time by Goodrum. Well, I went. Take a look at the boys up front for the Raiders. John Matusak, Dave Rowe, and Otis Sistrunk. And that 3-4 defense, remember. Rice, Johnson, Hall, and Hendricks. Asume is now in there as Kramer sets up. Flag on the play. So he'll throw it anyway to Sammy White, but it's not going to count. Well, you heard the number 78. We'll see if Steve Riley is guilty of an infraction. That's what it would be. Nothing going right, right for Minnesota. Oakland gave you a little four-man front that time. Gave you a new look there. He studied the films all week, and they're predominantly a three-man front. And being a rookie, I imagine being set for a three-man front and then seeing a four-one could confuse you a little bit, mm, I should say. False start, number 78, offense. So Steve Riley, out of USC, Gilly of the infraction. It is third and 17 from their own five for Minnesota. Tommy Kramer, 22, going on 40 in this ball game right now. Dumping it off to Foreman and threw it away instead. So Chuck Foreman, hoping to get one on the outside where he had some room, needs 92 yards rushing to get 1,000 for the third consecutive year. And the Vikings will now have to root it out of there, and Neil Cuebo will be asked to punt from his end zone. Neil Colsey will be standing on the 45-yard line of Minnesota. And I hate to be on the negative side, but that's one thing the Vikings have not done well this year is, is cover punts. They're giving up about 10 yards per return. Cuebo got it out of there. Colsey on the 45. To the 35, knocked down by Mark Keller. So Keller number 35, Robert Miller making the hit. And so we have five minutes and 57 left in the first quarter. Oakland 14, Minnesota nothing. 
Neil Claybo rooting out a 40-yard punt. There was a 10-yard return by Neil Colsey, and Oakland will put it in play first and 10 on the Minnesota 35-yard line, 5.57 to go in the first quarter, and Oakland leading 14-0. They started out the season. The Oakland Raiders is one of the better teams in football. In fact, it looked like they were just going to overwhelm everybody in the division. Then the injuries hit and kept getting worse. They're trying to put it together now, and they're a veteran team and a proud team, not so too well. Branch goes left, Boletnikov right, second man is Davis. And a flag on the play as Davis gets to the 30-yard line. Sutherland and Beeler really going head-to-head -head on a little blocking there in the middle of the line. We'll wait on the call, evidently against Oakland. And I think it could have been some holding on, on Beeler, too. Holding, number 64, offense. That's what it was. George Beeler, guilty of the infraction. He went to school up here at Stanford. Pretty big rivalry back east. Philadelphia nosed out the Giants 17-14. First and 20 from the 45. And Stabler leading 14-0. Dumps to Van Egan. And Van Egan gets across the 40-yard line. Jeff Wright making the tackle. Jenny Stabler mixing it up. Sits back in that pocket. You chase him out of there, he's got problems because of those bad knees. But no, he's just mixing it up the pass and the screens and the runs, the draws, rather. That's the way he does, though. He's a hard man to figure out. One thing, oh, he's got the guts of a U.S. Army mule. He'll do anything. Well, the Chicago Bears defeat Green Bay 21-10. to 10. They play the Giants next week. Minnesota will be playing Detroit next week. Here comes Clarence Davis. There goes Clarence Davis. Hit by Fred McNeil and Jim Marshall as he crossed the 40-yard line. By the way, we could give you a footnote on that Bear game. Walter Payton carried 32 times for 163 yards and two touchdowns. Payton has now rushed for 1,805 yards this year. He is something else. We'll get to see him next week. The two coaches, as usual, John Madden, very visible, but Grant low-key and watching. Third and 15 from the 39. Whoops! Table slip. Still gets it out towards Casper, and it's broken up by the middleman, Jeff Seaman. Table lost his footing down there. Excellent turf, though. I think it would add years to a receiver's uh, playing career, being able to play on that uh, regular grass, nice and soft. Watch him as he slips right here. Puts his little old right hand down and gets back up. Great play there by Seaman. Jeff Seaman, of course, is trying to read Stabler's mind. That'll be an interesting selection all day long for Jeff. Let's put it this way. Stabler's hero is Bobby Lane. Now you're going to figure his mind. But there's the greatest kicker in the game. Ray Guy, after a very high pass from center, he will kick it out. You believe him. Out at the three-yard line. Is he the greatest? Oh, what a kicker. Ray Guy gets the punt of the day as he narrows it to the three. A 36-yard punt after the snap from center almost went over his head. And who else besides Al Davis would draft a guy number one, a punter number one? Never in the history of the National Football League has it been done until Ray Guy. Welcome back to the Oakland Coliseum. Vin Scully along with Alex Hawkins. And the Raiders very much at home, leading 14 to nothing. And Minnesota, fresh from having punted out of the end zone, now has the ball first and 10 from their own three as John Madden, last minute discussion with Kenny Stabler. Tommy Kramer with McClanahan and Foreman. Fumbles and falls on the ball. It's loose, picked up by Willie Hall for a touchdown, Oakland. Would you believe that? Oh, buddy. Get the fork. I'm done. That's Willie the Hall. Bad exchange. And this, well, they've only had three possessions. All three of them have ended in bad exchanges there. Willie Hall, a free agent from Southern Cal. He recovered a fumble in the first quarter of the Super Bowl against Minnesota. Kramer, you see, dropped it, fell on it. It squirted up in the air, and Hall just picked it up and walked in. And they're going to push the Vikings into the bay. It is 20 to nothing, Oakland. We have four minutes and 22 seconds left in the first quarter. Get out of town. Whoa. If it were a fight, they'd have stopped it on eye cuts by now. <laughs> it's up and good. 
The Oakland Raiders are leading the Minnesota Vikings 21 to nothing. Take another look at that loose ball. He yes. lost it right away. Yes, sir. Had got out from under because he falls on it right there. Good and watch position. It pop up. Squirted up. I have no earthly idea. Went up like wet soap. Someone said the ball takes funny bounces, but that's been so many years ago. Who said that? Francis Scott Key. So you had Van Egan punch one over. You had Cliff Branch capture a touchdown pass. And now you have Willie Hall pick off the fumble. And Bud Grant not ready to talk to anybody right now. I like their Minnesota's approach to it, though. They're very realistic with their approach to this game. They said, we've always got next week. That's who we've got to beat anyhow. And a lot can happen between now and then. Oakland, of course, sky high. They knew coming out onto the field that New England had beaten Miami. They knew that if they won today, they would have clinched the wild card. And they sure would appear to have a first quarter lock on it. And once again, Manfred Moore, who played rugby this past winter in Sydney, Australia. He keeps busy. Where'd you get that? Huh? Where did you get book? that? It's true. He did. The Ray Guy. Kicks it to the left side. Robert Miller to the 30. Out of bounds before he can get up to the 35. There's a McClanahan on the Oakland ball club. And it was that McClanahan, Randy McClanahan, who made the tackle. Well, here's the bowl picture on CBS. First of all, on Sunday, Christmas Day. Penn State versus Arizona State. Penn led by Chuck Fusina. Arizona State, after that ball game on Christmas, Two more big bowl games. Sun Bowl, Stanford and LSU on December 31st. And then the Cotton Bowl, undefeated Texas and Notre Dame on Monday, January 2nd. Chuck Foreman to the 35. Sun Bowl. Picked up and dragged down by Floyd Rice. And Oakland has recovered it again. And that ain't, that's just not right. That's just not right to get off the start like that. Poor Tommy Kramer, what a sensational week he had last week. Chuck Foreman, who does carry the ball a little loosely, got a good hit that time, and up it comes. You know, there was a stat before the game that summed up Minnesota. They were minus 16 in turnovers, and here they've turned the ball over four times in the first quarter to Floyd Rice, who has to be Puff Rice right about now <laughs> to picking that one up. Four minutes to go in the first. And Clarence Davis looking for a place to go. Fred McNeil takes him out of bounds. Boy, what a route. 21-0 Oakland. Bud Grant was saying last week that when he was behind 24 to nothing to San Francisco, that was the furthest back he had ever been. Well, look at it this week. And this, is, this drive's not over yet. So Oakland... Has the ball on the 24-yard line of Minnesota, second and nine. Bolitnikov wide left and Branch in a slot left. Davis now on a wing. So the setback is Van Egan. Pulling is Henry Lawrence, and he runs up Lawrence's back across the 20-yard line. Big number 70, Henry Lawrence. He's quite a player, even though there are not too many people familiar with him. Yes, sir. Henry was a number one draft choice. It is his fourth year from Florida A&M. He replaced John Bella when Jella, Bella was hurt earlier in the year and had, Bella has been unable to move him out of the lineup since. Van Egan, you talk about a guy that does not fumble. How many times he carried the ball this year? Well, coming into the ball game, he had 280-some-odd carries without a fumble. Third and four from the 19-yard line. Branch in a slot right inside Boletnikov. Sabre getting away from the rush. Flag on the play. And the pass is caught by Boletnikov. But let's see. Paul Kraus brought him down. Stabler slings the flag down in disgust. So you know it's going to be against Oakland. Let's see if we can pick it up or where the holding was. I do not see anything so far. Oh, it could be right there. Kenny Stabler just throws darts. How many balls has Blitnikoff caught in his career? A great many of them. Holding, number 63, offense. So the holding against veteran Gene Upshaw. So that slows down Oakland for the moment. Detroit Baltimore 
a possible upset there indeed with Detroit leading Baltimore six to three in what sounds like a pitchers battle in football. Third and 14 from the 29. Stabler, no good. It was intended for his wide receiver, Mike Ciani, and Jeff Wright was the closest man to the ball. Almost picked it off. Stabler annoyed at himself or perhaps even Ciani's route. I'm not sure. They had a, they, he turned out on the pattern and then he turned it back up the field like a sideline and go. And I don't know which one was the fault on that. Ciani has been in trouble with some injuries. Hadn't worked out all this week. That's Ray Guy, whose last punt went out at the three-yard line after a high snap from Santa, you'll remember, will try and push Minnesota back into the corner again. Bob Grimm is over there in the corner. Grimm will watch the ball hit, and this time it rolls into the end zone. And for the first time, Minnesota will have a little bit of room on their own 20. They have really been penned in, and there's the guy who did it last time, Ray Guy, a five-year man out of southern Mississippi. His longest punt, 74 yards this year. So Tommy Kramer will take over first and 10 on his own 20. Here's the NFL on CBS next Sunday. The regional game, Chicago, New York, New Orleans, Atlanta, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, Green Bay. Foreman, the setback with McClanahan on a wing. Here comes Foreman. Got a good block from Ron Yeri, but there weren't enough people to throw blocks, and Willie Hall has him. Little Foreman is wrapped up. Be interesting, as Willie Hall, remember, picked off that fumble and scored a touchdown. But Grant, somehow or other, trying to get his Minnesota ball club pumped up. They are flat as a pancake right now as Ahmad Rashad comes in, and Bob Tucker goes out. Second and six from the 24. It is 21 to nothing Oakland. Two minutes and 26 seconds left in the first quarter. Kramer looking to Foreman. And he gets popped by Floyd Rice immediately. You know, when you mention all... As we look at this again, we see Chuck Foreman, who they go to so often. About the only quarterback that doesn't is Bob Lee. When he's quarterback, for some unknown reason, he doesn't throw to uh, Foreman very much. Foreman, an excellent receiver, as you all know. Floyd Rice, a free agent out of first was with Houston and San Diego in his seventh year. And I wanted to say about the Oakland defense, they're not like their offense at all. That sounds stupid, doesn't it? Well, what I mean, mean by that is they have four free agents. They have only three draft choices and four trade players. The people they traded for playing on Third and five from the 25-yard line. Complete to Sammy White. Neil Colsey brings him down at the 36-yard line. Tommy Kramer, he's one of 11 children. He has six brothers and four sisters. His dad was a coach at Texas Lutheran for six years. So he has quite a football background. He was a leading passer, All-American from Rice last year. A lot of people in the draft were interested in him, but nobody thought he'd go in the first round. The Vikings said they had their eye on him the whole way. When they picked Tommy Kramer, it was the first time that the Vikings picked a quarterback in the first round. So you know he's got some credentials. First and 10 from the 38. Play action fake to McClanahan. And Kramer will keep it to the 40, and down he goes. Dave Rowe brought him down. Big Dave, he's been around. Yes, sir. New Orleans, he started out there, went to New England, to Houston, to San Diego, and somehow these Mavericks that run around the league, when they get here with the Oakland Raiders, they get a fresh start and a fresh outlook, and they play ball for John Madden. One thing Tommy Kramer will have to do is see around Dave Rowe. Rowe is 6'7 and 270. He blocks out the sun. They get a lot of people on that defensive line to do. If you're a cornerback or even a linebacker now, this is your view as Kramer sets up. Second and seven from the 41. And he's going to be swallowed up. And down he goes by John Matusak, the other fellow who is 6'7". And the other fellow has been much traveled. Started out with Houston, Kansas City, and on to Washington. He's a free agent. Somehow they play when they get here under John Madden or Al Davis or the Oakland organization, whatever. Kramer sets up nicely, though. I like that he's footwork there. 
too much Matusak. Look at that straight there. One arm on his jersey brings it down. Boy, those are sizable characters. Matusak and Rose, 6'7 and 270 each. A sizable first quarter for Oakland, that is. The Raiders sitting on top of the crest of a 21 to nothing lead. I believe that there it is. Oakland 21, Minnesota nothing as we start the second quarter. The Raiders had 19 plays in the first quarter and the Vikings only nine. And it is third and 18 from the 30. Make it 19 now as they spot the ball. And Kramer, another tough call. Step corner to the 40. To the 45. And he has just about made the first down. So Kramer knows one thing. In trouble, go to Foreman. Doesn't take a whole lot of intelligence to know that, though. Uh -huh. Chuck Foreman having a great year, as all of them are for him. Just needs uh, 92 yards. Not less than that now. Reach that thousand mile mark or thousand yard mark, rather. It seemed like a thousand miles. Yes, sir. The balance on him. Just reflexes. Good football instinct. But he has not done well, as the numbers tell you, against Oakland. So he's trying to change that a little bit. First and 10 from the 49. <laughs> Rushed by Rowe. The Kramer chased by Matusak. Just did get across the 45-yard line. Jack Tatum came up, and he just got by him. Floyd Rice finally making it. Tommy Kramer's stats so far in the limited time he's played have been overwhelming. 61% of completion, four touchdowns with only one interception. That's really exceptional for a rookie in the situations he's been put in. The first game against Cincinnati where he showed any time, had it all going his way, but last week down 24 nothing to a very good San Francisco defense and still responded. Well, we'll see how he can respond today. He's down 21 to nothing. Kramer looking deep. Now looks to Foreman, but before he can, Dave Rose swallows him up. Rowe, by the way, in the Super Bowl, blocked two passes. So at 6-7, he really is a standout along with Matusak. So the Oakland defense, anything but tired. They've only been on the field for about 11 plays thus far. And Dave Rowe, 11 years out of Penn State, already making his pleasant throne. Third and five from the 46. Sammy White in a slot left inside Ahmad Rashad. Foreman in motion right. Quick out to Foreman. And he hit and got away at the last minute. It was Skip Thomas who came up to hit him, and the ball got loose, as you saw. You see the football instincts of that guy, though. He just feels the pressure around and feels when people are around. Watch this. Watch how he tries to avoid the tackler and still keeps fairly good concentration on the football. Didn't see it. He was watching the football, but just knew it was around. The number one draft choice, and the Vikings have done very well with all their number one draft choices. That's so Neil Claybo. Three-year man out of Tennessee, ready to punt for Minnesota. Neil Colsey all alone on his 12. And that's going nowhere but up right now as it will hit on the 20 and stop at about the 15 and still rolling. So Minnesota again bottled up thanks to some tough punts to handle. And they're down 21-0. 21 to nothing, Oakland and the Vikings Having just punted to Oakland, there's a score of the Los Angeles Rams. John Capaletti on a 25-yard run and a 36-yard field goal by Rafael Septien sitting on top of a 9-0 lead against Atlanta. Boletnikov wide right and Branch left. Clarence Davis behind Van Egan, but he couldn't go anywhere. Van Egan took his best bolt at Matt Blair, bounced off Blair. And Davis trying to cut away from the block just ran right into a pack. Clarence Davis. Boy, he's had some impressive numbers. He came into this game with 718 yards rushing. He's got a career average of 4.8 yards per carry, which is extremely high. Anything over four is high. Second and seven. And Van Egan just bullying his way across the 20 and carrying people with him. Fred McNeil down at the bottom is Jeff Seaman. 
We'll see number 50, Jeff Seaman, on top of almost every ball carrier. He's going to have to play well. Up front, I'm afraid to just look at them moving Page out. That's what most people do when they play against him, because Page, when you run away from him, is very effective. Running at him, well, he's just not that big. Weighs about 225 pounds, which is that small for a tackle. Well, there's a drastic change in that one. As you can see, Baltimore just picked up a 35-yard touchdown run from Lydell Mitchell to take a 10-6 to lead over Detroit. Third and one. And Rick Humble picked up by Nate Wright to the 20, 15, 10, 5. He goes in for a touchdown. All right. Turn about is fair play. I'll say, how do you like that when it happens to you? Nate Wright. Nine-year man out of San Diego State picks up the fumble and runs it in for a touchdown. Oh, and that can change it around. It was so easy for the Raiders on those first three touchdowns. Minnesota, everything happened to them. Now it goes back the other way. Good, good bounce to field that time. He decided to go ahead and pick it up instead of fall on it. Look at the blocking out in front of him, too. Escorted in. Bud Grant, you could never tell whether Oakland had just scored or Minnesota. <laughs> you just don't know. We do know, however, that Fred Cox has just kicked it through. And so Minnesota trying to get back in the ball game, but Oakland still leading 21 to 7. Well, turnover time in the Oakland Coliseum, and Oakland's first turnover cashed into a touchdown for Minnesota. And the Vikings, of course, have caught the ball up four times. So they are behind Oakland 21 to 7. 11.31 left in the second quarter. And Fred Cox kicking, and it'll be handled by Carl Garrett at the 16. Down he goes. Craig, normally a tight end, making the first hit. And so Oakland takes over on their own 36-yard line. What started out to be a route may not be a route after all. 21-7. Eh? Fellow like Stabler calling plays. It'll be interesting to see if Minnesota, of course, as we mentioned, for Oakland, they're sky high, a win today, and they've won the wild card. Meanwhile, Minnesota, no matter what they do today, they still have to win next week against Detroit. 45, 38. Clarence Davis behind Beeler and Van Egan, and McNeil did a marvelous job. Fred McNeil not only strung the play out, but he made the tackle, number 54. Van Egan kept with him, too, on the play. Just a great play by Fred McNeil that time. Watch it as you see it this time. Watch number 30, Mark Van Egan blocking on him. He stays on him the whole way, as you see right there. Alan Page coming into the picture there. Fred McNeil played off his blocker after he'd strung it out and then made the play. Fine defensive play by Fred McNeil. Second and seven on the 39. Stabler over the middle to Van Egan, and Seaman brings him down. So Jeff Seaman had to come back and pick up Mark Van Egan. So that should be enough for the first down. Say, friends, if you haven't gotten into the holiday spirit, tomorrow should do it. Is that wonderful award-winning Yuletide special, A Charlie Brown Christmas, returns to the scene. Join Peanuts Gang and search for the true meaning of Christmas tomorrow at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. First and 10 from the 48. Van Egan. Seaman finally brings him down as he crossed the 45-yard line. Boy, that offensive line of the Raiders looks sharp. They're really coming off the ball, executing beautifully. Their back's against the wall, and no question about it. They know they have to been, win both games to get in the playoff, or probably do. And they can control their own destiny and fully intend to. We were talking about some of the Minnesota players who have consecutive streaks. Art Shell playing in his 139th. Gene Upshaw in his 153rd. Dave Dalby has played in 83 straight. Beal are 111. In other words, they have a lot of old heads up front. And durable over there. Well, Mark Van Egan finally brought down by Nate Allen. And he picked up the first down. Watch it from ground level. And that's about the way it looks like to those linebackers and safety men, too. Nate Allen there going in low and holding on. Egan is just a fine runner. He's one of those dependable guys. You can count on game in and game out. Excuse me. Otis Sistrun from behind. Yeah, I believe they got him out of a bar in Star Wars. Faber <laughs> <laughs> under a rush 
Eller hit him and he dropped the ball, but I think he let loose to the leather after the whistle. Eller, Eller and Sutherland putting a squeeze on Eller him. Eller been the most effective pass rusher for the Vikings. That's his 12th sack of the season, I believe. That's right. He had 15 last year. That would be his 12th, so he hasn't slowed up much at all. The snake. Gracious. He's had an interesting career. He's an interesting guy. One of the good old boys. Foley, Alabama. Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker, again trying to reach Stabler. We'll see if we'll have a blitz. Second down. Second down and about 20. Second and 20. Clarence Davis following Van Egan. Nowhere to go. Oh, and he is chewed up. Alan Page with Matt Blair on top. The Vikings too proud to quit, huh? Down 21 to nothing before they could turn around and coming back now. Alan Page just had some great seasons for the Vikings. Got a lot more in front of him, too. He is quick. One of the few defensive linemen, it seems like to me, that came out of Notre Dame that really from the start was a star and continued. You know, I just thought of an interesting point about Minnesota. You know, each time they had a rematch with the team that beat them in the Super Bowl, the Vikings won. Is that right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Third and 25 from the 49-yard line of Oakland. Stabler gets it to Belitnikov, and he's pushed out by Nate Allen, but he had a ton to go. He still has almost 10 more yards for the first down marker. And do you know anybody that over 10 years has caught over 40 balls per season? Belitnikov just doesn't seem to drop anything. Look how he keeps those feet in bounds on this and the total concentration. Had a great career here. Not over yet. You know, he's a nice catch of the season. Let's say Boletnikov is not big, but he's durable. In his 13 years, he's missed only eight games. Catches a lot of sideline patterns. That's the reason. <laughs> Ray Guy, the talented foot. We'll see what he does. Man for more all alone on the Minnesota oh. 10. And Guy sends it towards the airport. No wonder they thought helium was in that ball. I've already showed you I can kick it out on the Ooh. two. Now I'm going to show you how far I can kick it. <laughs> So Oakland 21, Minnesota 7, first and 10 on the Minnesota 20 coming up. Minnesota putting the ball in play first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Oakland leading 21 to 7, and we have 7 minutes and 37 seconds to go to the half. Cleveland has become a very unhappy city ever since the Rams shot out Cleveland 9-0. And to cap it off, Houston knocked them off today 19-15. It's a shame, too, because Forrest Gregg had them going up there at the time. Tommy Kramer has Chuck Foreman is the only setback. Foreman runs him in the two sack and Rice. For the benefit of you folks who had missed it earlier, New England defeated Miami 14 to 10 and consequently an Oakland victory today will assure the Raiders of the wild card bid. There he is, Mr. Otis Sistrunk, six years out of no college. No college. The Rams picked him up and they traded for him. And they're glad they did, too. He's done well. For him. Second and ten from the 20. Well, Foreman just did get to the line of scrimmage. Play action fake. Sammy White made 431. So that's history. First and 10 on the Raider 47-yard line. White is wide right, Rashad wide left. Foreman on a good play action fake, and now Kramer high off the hands of Rashad, picked up by Jack Tatum, and he is knocked down by Brent McClanahan. Another turnover. Yes, sir, and that one hurt, too. Ahmad Rashad had that ball, or should have had it. Tatum, that's his fourth interception of the season. That's his 20th career interception. Had a great career there already with the Oakland Raiders. Watch this now. Very catchable ball. Wouldn't have been the easiest one in the world. And I think he was influenced by a linebacker that time. Be Monty Johnson over there. So we have had six turnovers now. Four by Minnesota. This is now their fifth. Oakland has one turnover. It is 21 to 7 Oakland. 6.41 to go in the second quarter. First and 10 from the Oakland 32. Mark Van Egan following Clarence Davis. 
Fred McNeil on one side of him, Jeff Wright on the other. Vikings know they have to stiffen on that side to be able to stay in the ball game with this Raider team. They're a powerful team, the Oakland Raiders, and very determined, too. Mark Van Egan had carried for 54 yards. He has not handled the ball 14 times as Bud Grant tries to figure out how to stop him. So Van Egan, with 56 yards rushing, is now the best rusher in Oakland history as he's gone well over the 1,100 mark. Second and seven, and Stabler setting up. He's got Cliff Branch. And Kyle finally gets him. So Cliff Branch gets the ball inside the 45 to the 42-yard line, first and 10 Oakland. It's a great example. Watch how he waits for him to clear Matt Blair there. You see number 59, he waited. He had uh, time to do it. And that's what Kenny uh, Stabler has been afforded throughout his years of playing with the Oakland Raiders. He's had time to sit back there, and when you do, he'll kill you. There's no question about it. Well, he picked up 23 yards in one gulp to move the ball to the Minnesota 42-yard line as John Madden. Watching his ball club trying to recapture the opening edge. They're leading 21-7. And there goes Banasak as he gets across the 40-yard line. Pete Banasak, who scored two touchdowns against Minnesota in Super Bowl XI. Well, they call on him in short-yarded situations, and you know he's going to carry the ball, and nobody seems to stop him. Well, the Minnesota defense has spent most of the first quarter and half of the second out on the field. And we see that Studwell is now in there. When you look at Minnesota, you realize that they have four first-round draft choices as defensive linemen. They know where the game is played, don't they? Second and five. And there goes Carl Garrett to the 35-yard line. Carl Garrett at a New Mexico Highland against the Super Bowl team Minnesota. He had almost a five-yard average. Well, there it is. Tampa Bay finally wins one convincingly over New Orleans 33 to 14. And finally it came down and poor old Hank Spence. Eller almost took his head off. Carl Eller sacking Stabler for the second time. So the big guy now has 13 sacks this year. Go look at it again. You can get the Stabler. When you do get to him, he's going to go down like all the other quarterbacks. You know, I often think about that. He came within one team of being drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. They were going to pick him, and Oakland had to pick right in front of them and chose Stabler. And how different his story could have been had they, with the poor organization they've had in the past, been when he wouldn't have been afforded protection. Yeah, cue that song in The Man Who Got Away. Oh, we see about the football getting away. Ray Guy kicking to Manfred Moore at the 15. And he it. it. And it is Barnes. He almost knocked him right through the barn. Jeff Barnes, a rookie out of the University of California. He's one of eight children, so he knows about in a crowd. Did he ever slug him? So a 30-yard punt, zero return. Ray Guy. And Detroit came back to trip Baltimore. They led 6-3. Baltimore led 10-6. And Detroit has pulled it out 13-10 over Baltimore. Well, I guess the race is still on in that division. Big day for New England. First and 10 from the 15. Chuck Foreman. Nowhere. By the way, to all you folks who have been watching Detroit's victory over Baltimore and a rather historic Tampa Bay victory over New Orleans, pull up a chair. We've got one going here at the Coliseum. Oakland 21, Minnesota 7. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go in the half. Oakland looked like they were going to blow Minnesota out of the ballpark in the first quarter when they led 21 nothing. Minnesota trying to recover with young Tommy Kramer at the wheel. He oh. got rid of it, a great pass to Ahmad Rashad. Pat Toomey was right on his back, and he just did get it away, and then Monty Johnson hit him. Pat Toomey comes in on passing situations to relieve Otis Sistrick. He comes in fresh, and he puts a rush on. Look at the reflexes, reflexes on this boy. Tommy Kramer, 
feels pressure coming, and look how quickly he gets it off. See, there's no running room, as you see Tumay come into the picture, and look how quickly he got it off. I like him. By the way, as you see Rashad being tackled, Floyd Rice, who recovered a fumble earlier, Floyd shaken up on that last play, and he's down. And that's something the Raiders don't need a whole lot more of. They've had their share of precious plenty of injuries this season. A reminder, the CBS Sports Spectacular. Coming up next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, you'll see highlights of the WC World Welterweight Championship fight between Carlos Palomino and Jose Palacios. Then we will have the National Hot Rod Association World Championships with Shirley Mo Downey and Don Garlis competing in their top fuel dragsters, along with Don Prudhomme racing in the funny car category. Plus the finals of the United States Professional Arm Wrestling Championship and competing, well, you have folks with such professions as a rock star manager, a former boxing champion sparring partner, and a 250-pound waitress, just to name a few. And the final event of the World's Strongest Men competition featuring the tug of war. All coming up next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Did you say a 250-pound waitress? Yeah. Known to pick up a tab. <laughs> First and ten. What was that great line from the bridges of Tokori? Where do we get those people? Well, there's Pat Toomey who put the heat on. He's been around in about two, brother. Jeff Barnes is in for Floyd Rice, and we'll see if Toomey can get off the mark. Kramer has a first and ten from his 27. Sammy White in motion to the left. Throws it out to White. They set up a screen, but there's no screen. Pat Toomey finally knocked him down. The only man over there to block for Sammy White was Steve Riley, number 78. And there were just too many Oakland Raiders. You got it. They read it perfectly that time. Just watch it out here. There's nobody. Blocking trying to form out there, but the Raiders read it. They're a well-coached team. No question about it. So we have exactly two minutes left to go to the half. The Oakland Raiders, 21. The Minnesota Vikings, 7. Well, with two minutes left to go to the half, the Oakland Raiders leading Minnesota 21 to 7. The Vikings trying to get it in gear. We'll have it second and 10 on their own 27-yard line. So Tommy Kramer calling his own plays, although I believe the touchdown pass to Sammy White that won it last week was called by Jerry Burns. Boyd the tight end on the left side. White to the left and Bob Grimm to the right. Kramer to Robert Miller and he's at the 40 flag on the play as he crosses the 45. And Kramer lost his number at least on the back that time. Boy, he is getting some pressure over there from Matusak. If you'll watch it right here. John Matusak, number 72, coming into the picture here. This boy can move. There's no such thing as a quarterback playing in this game today that can't move, because they're not going to last very long, I don't believe. Throws well on the run. Robert Miller, you haven't heard a lot of. First and 10 from the 47, and Kramer looking and dumping, gets his tight end void, is bumped out of bounds by Skip Thomas. And that should be enough for the first down, and it stops the clock with 121. You think that mobile quarterback won't make a difference, though, rather than the sack getting off the completions for, what, 30 yards now? He had one high pass that got off the hands of Ahmad Rashad that stopped his last drive. But I think Bud Grant is probably getting some very important answers as to Tommy Kramer and the prospect of that game against Detroit. Remember, Detroit almost upset Baltimore today before Baltimore pulled it out. First and 10 from the Oakland 42 in Minnesota trying to get back in the ball game. White inside Grimm in a slot right. Oh. Gets it to Robert Miller, and he gets a first down as he gets out at the 30-yard line. Do I like the arm on that boy and the reflexes he's got? He was he could have either taken the loss there, as you'll see right here, or get rid of it, and how he did it in a hurry. Talk about quick release. Watch this. No use throwing it. Look at this. And right on target, too. Not a long pass, not a difficult pass, but presence of mind to throw it like that. Robert Miller had caught 24 passes going into the ballgame. 
So he's caught a couple of big ones to keep the drive alive. It's on the Oakland 29-yard line, first and 10. White is right, Grim left. Kramer's got Foreman inside the 25. So Chuck Foreman needed about, oh, two more yards at least to get a first down. We have a minute and four seconds left to go to the half as Monty Johnson and Ted Hendrick came in to make the stop. Once again, the scrambling and the improvising of Tommy Kramer. He doesn't look like any rookie I've ever seen, I don't believe. Not the greatest footwork in the world, but he got the ball to him. And when you got a guy like Chuck Foreman, what do you want to do? Just get the ball to him any way you can. He's going to make something happen himself. Ted Hendricks coming in there. That's story. Chuck almost got out of the grasp of Monty Johnson. So the great Chuck Foreman has rushed for 39 yards. And Foreman figures to be very busy. He has caught two for seven yards today. And there is one of the many stories. Tommy Kramer came off the bench down by three touchdowns, pulled it out against San Francisco, started a game and saw his Vikings down 21 to nothing. And he has them very much back in the ball game, and especially if he can get him on the scoreboard now before the half runs out. And you've got to know, you can't tell it by his look, but you've got to know that the entire coaching staff is pleased with the performance they've seen so far. That's Outside of those early fumbles and explicit exchanges with ball kids, and that's Don Schenick, of course, defensive coach with the Oakland Raiders. Man's about half nuts. <laughs> He's be my roommate in Baltimore. Second and four from the 23-yard line of Oakland. So Kramer trying to keep it alive. White in a slot right inside Bob Grimm. Miller and Foreman, the running back. Kramer got away as he throws in the end zone. No good. Broken up by Willie Brown. Intended for Sammy White. How much you can say about Willie Brown? He's been around forever. 15 years of playing. Holder of several records for the Oakland Raiders. He's intercepted. There's a reminder at halftime, Brent, Phyllis, and Irv with scores and highlights from around the league as we start to get a definitive picture of the upcoming playoffs and eventual Super Bowl. So stay right with us. Sammy White threw a shoe going into the end zone. Probably one of the wings fell off. So he has to go up and get a new one. Only one with two wings. Third and four from the 23. Now you have Tucker in a slot right inside Grimm. Broken up, a one-handed slap at the last minute to bring it down by Lester Hayes. And we ought to took him. Number 37, Lester Hayes is the rookie who took the heat last week. Watch him knock it down. He was the boy beaten by Harold Jackson. Made up for it there. Kramer tried to force that one in there, as you saw. No reason for him to throw the ball in there. But then he is a rookie after all said and done. 53 seconds to go to the half. It is fourth and four for Tommy Kramer's club. He has Sammy White right, Bob Grimm left. He's going to throw it, and it is just across the fingertips of Sammy White. Look at the delight on Lester Hayes as he comes off. He's, He's a got, player. Got me last week, but you haven't got me yet today. Youngster out of Texas A&M. Take another look. Tommy Kramer's got an extremely strong arm. Question his choice in where he wants to throw the ball, though. He's trying to make something too much happen too quickly. He's trying to force the ball in there. Do not... Oh, of course, last week, you, those of you who saw the Ram game, you saw Harold Jackson in the waning moments of the game uh, beat Lester Hayes deep with the only ball he caught all day. That'll happen to rookies, particularly against a guy like Harold Jackson. So now Kenny Stabler gives it to Mark Van Egan, and he gets out across the 25-yard line. He was following Gene Upshaw's block. You'll see the time ticking down. It is 21-7 Oakland. As we're coming up to halftime, a very, very gray, dismal day in Oakland. A definite threat of rain. In fact, it was raining just 20 miles away when the game started. Second and five from the 28. Van Egan again behind Upshaw. 
got it out across the 30-yard line. So Kenny will let the clock run down. So Kramer had two shots and couldn't do it. One on the interception and the other as he could not get the ball to Sammy White. So Oakland goes into the clubhouse leading 21 to 7 at halftime. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments and just what Bud Grant does. He tries to come from behind in the second half. game that it was raining about 25 miles away well it has taken that long about an hour and a half it's that kind of a day the lights are on and we're ready Oakland kicking off to Minnesota Manfred Moore on the two yard line to the 10 15 20 not quite to the 25 Terry Robisky brought him down, and now Minnesota trying to move the ball when time ran out in the first half, and we'll see what they will come up with. Brent McClanahan is back in there. Robert Miller played a good portion of the second quarter, but McClanahan is back in there with Foreman. Sammy White goes left. Grimm goes right. Ahmad Rashad, who has a sore back, took a pretty good lick late in the second quarter. Ended by Willie Hall, who scored a touchdown, you remember, earlier when he picked off the fumble. Willie really put the blocks to him. Willie played football at USC. He was originally drafted by New Orleans, a javelin thrower, and also a halfback and fullback thrower. Look at all the, the Raiders, the way they tape up. I don't care what kind of day it is, they always look like the cold. Well, maybe that's silver and black, but they always look like the cold. You don't mention the word cold in the play in Minnesota. Second and nine from the 24. Play action takes the form and they dump it off to Foreman. And he gets just about to the 35-yard line. Monty Johnson bringing him down. And that's just about what he usually gains on pass plays. Just under 10 yards per pass is what he does. Look at I've never seen that play stopped in professional football, and I believe I'd go into a game until I did, I'd keep on running, particularly when you got a guy like Chuck Foreman, the way he can move around with it. With a little delay out of the backfield, waiting for those linebackers to clear. Dave Rowe game. and Monty Johnson trying to read young Tommy Kramer's game plan. First and 10 from the 34. White in a slot right inside Grimm. It was almost picked off by Jeff Barnes, number 56. Willie Brown was also there, but look at the padding on Jeff Barnes. How in the world could he ever catch a ball? You got me. Look how he fires his. Tommy Kramer. He's got a shotgun when he wants to let it go. Not a perfect spiral, though. It's a very loose ball. A little hole in it. Not a tight spiral at all. Trying to drill it. A little bit over anxious. All right, second and 10 from the 34. Somehow he got away from Willie Hall and John Matusak, but he couldn't get away from Otis Sistrunk. It's been the story pretty much all day for young Tommy Kramer. Offensive line of the Minnesota Vikings has just not given him any time to throw the ball at all or set up. He's had to scramble and improvise just about all the time. That time, John Matusak and several others, just a host of them. So there is Otis Sistrunk. His cousin, Manny, has to feel pretty good today. The Philadelphia Eagles knocked off the Giants. Of course, for Otis, he's had to play it the hard way to get here. Three years semi-pro at Norfolk. Third and 17 from the 27. Good for But they spot him and stay with him. Matusak, the first man to make contact with Monty Johnson. So Monty stopped that play, and that means Neil Claybo will come in to punt. Neil Colsey will go deep to the Oakland 30-yard line, and Minnesota stymied it in the first series of the second half. Claybo averaging 39, his longest kick of the year, 69.
But Posey will take it at his 27-yard line. And there's a flag on the play, dropped at the 30. Down fast under that punt. For Minnesota, a rookie number 45, Tommy Hannon. And let's wait for the call. It's a clip against Oakland, a 42-yard punt with no return. So it's against Oakland. So first and 10, the ball on the Oakland 16-yard line. So the penalty against Oakland, that'll slow them up a little bit. And Stabler will put it in play first and 10 from the 17. Bolitnikoff is wide right and Branch left. The tight end Casper on the right side. Clarence Davis oh. is being pelted by Fred McNeil. Oh. They're getting a lot of play out of their number one draft choice. As I said earlier, Today, Ben, their number one draft choices, they just don't seem to miss on them. They just hit on every one of them. All those linebackers. By the way, we'll be looking for Jeff Seaman, number 50, because Seaman was shaken up, and he is not in there. Scott Studwell is a middle linebacker, and he's a rookie going for Minnesota. Van Egan and Carl Eller made a very good play to bring him down. He really did. He just overpowered Henry Lawrence that time. It was no contest. Carl Eller has a couple of sacks today, picked up two. You talk about durable, Carl Eller has missed only one game since the 1964 season. And that was the opener last year when he broke his thumb. He had played in 168, and after that he has played in every one. Third and eight from the 19. Clarence Davis and Eric Studwell and Page all ganged up on that one. Edwell, a, number, a rookie, a number nine choice for him. He played at Illinois where he broke, he made 177 tackles at Illinois to break Dick Butkus' record there, tackles in his career. So Kenny Stabler is stymied, just as Tommy Kramer was stymied. Playing a little hard nose now. Oakland 21, Minnesota 7, Manfred Moore back on his 40, and Ray Guy. A low average, but remember, two of them, he was just trying to kick out of bounds inside the 20. One, he kicked out on the three. Now he can let out. Ball hitting on the 47. Moore touched the ball. And we'll have to wait and see who finally got it. It'll be, It'll be the Vikings ball. The Vikings are hollering that they touched it. Manfred Moore having a shaky day. It'll be their ball because no one had possession on that. The only time that you can turn it over is if Oakland had got possession before they fumbled it out of bounds. Everybody went down, including the officials. And Minnesota will put it in play, trailing 21-7. So it'll be first and 10 for Minnesota on their own 30-yard line after Manfred Moore's muff of the punt by Ray Guy that traveled 52 yards. 21-7 Oakland, 10-14 to go in the third quarter. Grimm is right, wide left, and Boyd on the left side. A good save by Foreman because coming was Barnes, and you watch Chuck Foreman on the play action fake made a good block on Jeff Barnes to keep him away from Kramer. And with John Matusak all day long been putting pressure. He's been wearing Ron Larry out, or Yerry out, rather. Take a look at him here, number 72. Look out. He uses that height and throws his arm. Now, how tall do you have to be? With his arms up, you're talking about nine or ten feet. When you jump and he's got those arms up, he's six and seven anyhow. Yeah. Second and ten from the 30. Grimm is to the left and White to the right. Kramer gets his tight end, Stu Boyd, and Jeff Barnes brings him down at the 35-yard line. Let's look in again on Ronieri and his battle with John Matusak. All afternoon, it's been a good one. Tusak number 72. Yeah, he wants to control him with that left arm a little bit, doesn't he? Number 73. So Kramer completing a pass. 
moves it out for a third and three situation. The ball across the 35-yard line. And waiting at the other end, the awesome figure of John Matusak, 6'7", 270. Picks it up again. There's a flag on the play. And oh! Hit by Willie Hall. Finally goes down at the 40 yard line. Have you seen a more aggressive quarterback than that? He lowered his shoulder on Hall. However, there's a flag way back, and I think there's going to be a clip against Minnesota. And it might have been the fellow who was clipped was Jeff Barnes. On the replay, remember shades of Joe Cap, Minnesota Vikings. Kramer is just used to running now. He's not even counting on it. He just drops it, goes back to get it. The thing that impresses me, Ben, about this one is the way he sees uh, Willie Hall coming. And look how he seems to run at him, a la Jim Taylor. He delivers a blow to him. Now, how many quarterbacks do that since Joe Cap? And finally, Hendrick, and then the same Willie Hall knocked him down. Holding number 33. Brent McClanahan was guilty, and the party he was guilty of holding was Jeff Barnes. So it'll be third and about 14 from the 26-yard line. Three-man front again. Now Pat Toomey comes back in to put a little heat on. White goes left and Graham right. So Ahmad Rashad evidently banged up. There goes Chuck Foreman. Jack Tatum finally bulldogs him down shy of the 35-yard line. We're looking across the field to see if we can pick off Rashad. Because he is so important to the Minnesota game plan. And ever since he took a good shot in the back late in the second quarter, Bob Grimm has been playing and Rashad has been out. Rashad got a lick in the back last week. Someone caught him in the helmet. He was questionable a little earlier this week. So Neil Cuevo punting again, and deep is Neil Colsey at the 20. Blayhack missed him. He's still on his feet and finally swallowed up. Matt Blair, among others, got him. So it'll be first and 10 as Oakland, leading 21-7, will put it in play. Mentions that he is okay. The last we saw him, remember, that a high pass went off his fingertips. He took a shot, and he hadn't been in there since. First and 10 for Oakland on their own 25. And a quick out is picked off and dropped by Bobby Bryant. Tried to take it away from Cliff Branch. Almost did it. You don't hear a whole lot about Bobby Bryant, but he has been a steady performer for the Minnesota Vikings throughout, what, about nine years. Number seven draft choice from the University of South Carolina. He has been outstanding. 39 career interceptions and almost 40 right there. Now, last year, he was slowed up. He suffered a broken arm in camp, though he surrendered his job for a while, but he's back in business Doesn't again. Doesn't weigh but about 180 pounds. Second and 10 from the 25. Branch in a slot right. There goes Mark Van Egan. Pulled down. And it was Studwell, Scott Studwell, a rookie out of Illinois, who is playing for Jeff Seaman. There's double fives. He's put together 6'2", 225. And as Alex mentioned a moment ago, he broke Dick Butkus' record in his senior year for tackles. It's a pretty heavy credential to bring into I'll this league. I'll say it is. I don't believe I ever saw any better than Butkus. Third and eight from the 28. <laughs> Off the hands of Boletnikoff, and Jeff Wright was right with him. On the sideline, there is Jeff Seaman. Well, that's something you ought to run back because you don't see Blitnikoff miss that many passes in an entire year. That's a nice scene, too, of Seaman congratulating Studwell. Look at that blocking up there. Breaking down the pocket pretty nicely, though. Stable just waits. He just waits for those receivers. They're so well schooled that he's keep moving into various zones. They're a strong passing team. So Ray Guy, who's been pretty busy, and so is Manfred Moore. Remember, Moore muffed the last punt when he slipped and fell down. 7.44 to go in the third quarter, and it is 21-7 Oakland. Picking up 21 points before the chairs were warm here in the Coliseum. Moore juggling it 
inside is 25. See you later. Manfred Moore is having a very rough day back there. I'll say he is. He bought two kickoff returns and as well as that punt return. 48-yard punt. No hungry eyes of Willie Hall. He already picked up a score today, picking up a fumble, and he brought it in. He's been rather prominent in some very hard tackles as well. Certainly has, yeah. First and 10 from the Viking 26. To the 30, to the 25, to the 20, and Tatum brings Oakland into great scoring position again. What is that, Tatum's second interception of the day? It was, and there wasn't anybody near him. And the fifth of the season, Tommy Kramer just unloaded. No pressure to speak of that time. The pocket held, he just threw it too early. His man is cutting away from the pass. Yes, if you see, if he'd have thrown it at that time, he'd have curled in behind that linebacker. But then again, he is a rookie. Tatum has been outstanding. What a tough ball player he is. No cheap shot artist about him, brother. He's a tough football player. So here comes Oakland now, leading 21 to 7. First and 10 on the Viking 18. Mark Van Egan gets down to about the 15-yard line. Big Mark Mullaney, double sevens there to pick him off. We talked before about the Minnesota defensive line, saying that they have four first-round defensive linemen. Carl Eller, first round in 1964. Alan Page, first round in 67. Mark Mullaney, first round in 76. And James White. Second and seven from the 15. Clance runs away from two, and Jeff Wright, along with Bobby Bryant, bring him down for a loss on the play. You don't hear a lot about Jeff Wright either, but he could be an outstanding football player. He is an outstanding football player, but five knee operations has hampered him some. <laughs> Can you imagine him still playing football? I believe I'd quit after the third or uh, second or third, anyhow. I guess the last knee surgery was 1975 for Jeff Wright, who went to school at Minnesota. Third and 12 for the Oakland Raiders on the 20-yard line. 6-12 to go in the third quarter. Stabler intended for Dave Casper. Paul Kraus almost had a shot at it. Jenny Stabler, you just can't tell. You know, Casper has had such an outstanding season. It's the first time I believe he's gone to Casper all day. I'm a little bit surprised with that. Look at it from ground level. His eyes shifted off of his back coming out of the backfield onto Casper. Threw him into trouble that time, though. Oakland feels the league has really taken unfair advantage of Casper. But right now we'll see Errol Mann out of a hole by David Hump. The ball spotted at the 32-yard line. Excuse me, the 27-yard line. It'll be a 37-yard field goal. And the it is no good. Mann has missed now his last... Four field goals, three of them, and now the last four straight. So he's in a slump. He's 17 for 24. I believe that's the first one he's missed inside the 30 all year. It'd be a bad time to go cold, wouldn't it? Yeah, inside the 30, he was six for six. Well, as Errol Mann chewing at himself, we'd like to remind you there are two candidates for Towns Businessman of the Year Award. One is Maud, the other Walter. Things should be interesting when Maud comes away tomorrow at a new time. Nine, eight central and mounted. First and ten from the 20. Foreman with Goodrum blocking out in front. But Goodrum could only handle one man, and Willie Hall was able to handle Foreman. Take a look at Willie Hall, who's had an outstanding afternoon. I don't know how many tackles he's been in. A little misdirection step by Foreman there. Watch Hall come into the picture. Hello. Goodrum did his job. He took out Jeff Barnes, but there wasn't anybody to handle Hall. Couldn't have been. That's a picture tackle right there. Wrapping his arms around. That up, boy. Willie. 6'2", 225, 28 years old. He can play. Second and seven from the 22. Sammy White in motion. Fake by Kramer to White. And he throws it to the suburbs, and there's a flag on the play. 
tried to get that defensive back to commit himself like that with a pump and then take off. He had him beat, but the safety came up. There was nowhere to go. And then White, for some reason or another, Sam and White quit running on the play. Gave up on it. Oakland 21, Minnesota 7, 514 remaining in the third quarter. Boy, you look at these two teams, though, and how different they are in styles and contrast, but both of them winning teams just dominating their respective divisions. No penalty. Number 62 was blocking behind the line of scrimmage. is legal. Okay. I would think you would accept that. Honor behind the line of scrimmage, I think, is acceptable. And Ed White says, of course I follow the rules to the letter. You've got it. Ed White went to school up here. He went to the University of California. Got a lot of boys, about eight boys uh, from the Minnesota team from the West Coast, aren't they? That's right. Went to school in Cal. Ed Hendricks started out with the Baltimore Colts onto the Green Bay Packers and finally settled in right here. And what a guy he is. Going to be third and seven. Kramer's got Sammy White. And Neil Colsey has White. And that will be enough for a first down. As we mentioned, Colsey, it was questionable whether he's going to play or or not today. He was banged up last week. They drafted him originally as a punt returner. He's played every position in that defensive backfield for the Raiders. Kramer, I like the way he stands there. I like the way he stands there. Dave Rowe getting his arms up. He found a passing lane there and hit Sammy White. So after the missed field goal, the Vikings took over on the 20. They moved it to the 37 and they have it first and 10. White goes right. Bob Grimm playing for Ahmad Rashad wide left. Kramer trying to run around Matusak and Rowe. That's like trying to run around the Empire State Building. Takes a little longer, but heavier they are, huh? Oh. Of Minnesota. Slot right, wide inside rim. Robert Miller is now in the backfield. And it's a draw to Foreman. He got across the 40. Big Dave Rowe. As big as Rowe and Matusak are at 6'7". Oakland had an even bigger man. Tell you earlier in the game, six, nine and a half, I believe it was. They said they played the three of them on the same side of the line or in about the same side of the line against Pittsburgh. Kept them totally confused. It was like volleyball. All they did was stand at the line of scrimmage and jump. Kept Terry Bradshaw totally confused. The third down, third and six from the 41. To Bob Grimm. Willie Brown was defending. Good, reliable player ordinarily is Bob Grimm. That was an easily catchable ball. So the Oakland defense able to stop Kramer again. And Neil Kloibo will be punting. He's been busy. And Neil Cozy again goes back on the 20 yard line of Oakland. Good average for Claybo, a little better than 40 yards a kick. Claybo gets a bomb off Colsey retreating. And he'll get across the 20 yard line. Sammy Johnson, a fullback on the offense, able to make the tackle and bring him down. 3.29 to go in the third quarter. Oakland 21, Minnesota 7. Oakland leading 21 to 7. And a game that was marred by five quick turnovers has apparently settled down now. Meanwhile, at the Coliseum South, the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Rams leading Atlanta 9 to nothing in the third quarter. Capaletti busted one for a touchdown. Sepien kicked a field goal, and nothing has changed since. Nothing has changed with John Madden. No, it still looks like an unmade bed. <laughs> you said that. First and 10 from the 23. Mark Van Egan. Mark Mullaney, number 77. One of those first-round draft choice defensive linemen out of Colorado State. There he is, big boy, 6'6", 242. And Mullaney, who plays back of both Eller and Marshall, 
is just waiting now because Jim Marshall has announced his retirement, so I'm sure Mulaney will be a regular next year. San Diego out in front of Denver by a couple. To Belichnikov and Nate Allen brings him down right about at the first down marker. Let's see. A typical Oakland play that time. Kenny Stabler well, letting Belichnikov get plenty of depth on the thing and then making his cut very distinct and coming back toward the quarterback. Watch it this time. Oakland does this a little better than most teams do. The precise precision routes that they run and the time Kenny Stabler has. Look at it in the direction he's going. Back toward the quarterback before Nate Al Allen can wrap his arm around him. First and ten on the Oakland 33-yard line. Stabler to Van Egan. And he hit and moved across the 35. Surprising because both Alan Page and Matt Blair hit him. And they're pretty good roadblocks. And yet Van Egan was able to pick up a couple. Van Egan, a very compact built boy and a very compact runner. He's going to be good uh, for a lot of years with this Oakland team. And watch how the backs, let's see if they block for one another. Didn't have to that time. He's just a steady performer. Second down, six on a pitch back, and Clarence Davis. Again, at the bottom of the pile, Scott Studwell. So Kenny Stabler, fairly conservative, trying to move his club. Remember, in case you missed it, New England beat Miami. So if Oakland wins today, they are the wild card team. So it's a big one for the Raiders. Third down play for Stabler now. Davis runs into a pack. And again, you see number 55, Scott Studwell, the kid out of Illinois. He's doing good, isn't he? He sure is. They're pleased with him, too, aren't they? That a boy, you're doing good. 6'2", 224, and he's 23 years old. Did you say he was doing good? Yeah. He's also doing well. Yes, he is. Look at Scott Studwell, number 55. Nobody blocking him. He's reading it pretty good for a rookie. The veteran team, this Minnesota team, they bring the rookies along themselves, the team leadership. Eller and Marshall and people like that. Kind of police over all of them. Joe Blayhack and Manfred Moore in a twin safety. And Ray Guy got a it upstairs. Oh, my. And Moore made it get into the yard. I'll tell you Terry what, Robisky almost knocked him into the grandstands. If it isn't raining now, there's no reason for it. This guy brought rain with that one. He can do anything with a football. He can line them out. He, that one, he must, I don't know what the hang time was on that, but it was tremendous. About an hour and a half. About a day. 42-yard punt. His average hang time is a little more than four seconds. However, there was a flag on the play to cancel the whole thing out. Manfred Moore, you remember, after that long talk with Bud Grant, you would think he was going to call a fair catch, but he took it anyway. It's been a tough day for Manfred, but he's not going to back off from anybody. And let's see the penalty. It's fun to watch Ray Guy kick. I was I'm looking forward In to the next one. Downfield on the punt, number 29. Fourth down. Though a little over-anxious, and they get down underneath that. You begin. The guy will just back off five yards and try it again. Manfred Moore is alone now. Blayhack comes off. The so Moore all by himself. Ball almost hit Morris Upshaw, uh, Bradshaw, and Bradshaw will down it right there. So no return, no handling at all. A 38-yard punt by Ray Guy. Manfred Moore never had a chance on that one. When he hits it bad, he still gets 38, 40 yards out of the You know, at one time, he kicked one 90-some-odd yards, 93 yards, in fact, in college. You can imagine kicking a football that far. I've never seen anything like it. 93 in college. Great guy. Heck of an athlete. Played basketball and baseball in college, too. First and 10 Vikings on their own 29 yard line. 21 7 open. To Sammy Johnson. And Johnson trying to get out of the way of Willie Brown. Spins out of bounds. Stopping the clock. 
17 seconds left to go in the third quarter. About as safe a pass as you can have in professional football. You see Tommy Kramer running out there in the direction of the receiver and running in that direction. Absolutely no imagination, but absolutely no risk of interception on something like that. Sammy Johnson, by the way, played for San Francisco. He came to the Vikes in the Jim Lash trade, so they know him up here in the Bay. 17 seconds to go in the quarter, second and three from the 36. Bootleg, but they're there, and a flag on the play, and a fumble finally picked up by big Mike McCoy out of Notre Dame, but a flag and a whistle. McCoy, 6'5", 275, a growing boy. He just puts it on his hip, a la Eddie LeBaron. Goes around to the outside with the full intent of running. Ron Yeri out and blocking in front of him. Let's see if we can see where the ball came loose. There it is. Mike McCoy, open field runner. Number one draft choice for the Packers. Never quite panned out to be what they thought he was going to be over there. Oakland trying to rejuvenate another one of these boys that the other teams had given up for and picked him up. Made a trade for him. Well, it sounds like a dirge. The numbers for Minnesota. Would you believe seven fumbles? Mm. And they've lost them all. So McCoy, the latest Oakland hero. First and ten from the 32. To Cliff Branch. Touchdown. He beat Jeff Wright. Second touchdown for Cliff Branch. And Kenny Stabler just arced that ball a magnificent pass. That's the way the guy does. When he wants to kill you, he can do it in a hurry. He's got the receivers to do it. He's got an offensive line and a fort him with protection to do it. If you don't get a rush on this guy, you are dead. Look at the concentration and the leaping ability. That Cliff Branch is something. They developed him, though. The first two years didn't catch hardly anything. From then on, brother, he's last three years, what? 60, 51, and 46 balls. Well, he's caught two touchdowns today for a half a dozen this year, beating Jeff Wright, and Kraus just couldn't come over in time to help out. Darrell Mann now trying to make it 28-7, and hold on. Two seconds left to go in the third quarter. Offside. So the penalty on the ensuing kickoff against Minnesota. 27 to 7 Oakland. They led 21 to nothing in the first quarter. And Minnesota unable to hold on to the football. Turnovers, as Bud Grant said, will kill you. And they were minus 16 going into today's game and certainly minus more now. 23 to do about now. And it is 28 to 7 in favor of Oakland. So Minnesota looked like they were going to get back in the ball game when Kramer had that drive in the second quarter, but there was an interception. And once again, Bud Grant talking quickly first to Manfred Moore, and that's Bob. So the folks in Oakland feeling very chipper about things, especially John Madden. You know, it's the first time since 1971 and the second time since 1966 the Raiders have not been at least divisional champs. And of course, they're going in as the wild card. Manfred Moore to the 20 yard line. 25, 30, 35. Boy, carrying that ball, as they say, like with a loaf of bread. That's his first return as the third quarter is history. So that's the end of the third quarter of the Coliseum. Oakland 28, Minnesota 7. And we now pause for a word from your local station. Although he doesn't look it, has to feel a lot happier about things now as we start the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the Minnesota 38. To Boy, the tight end, and he goes down just shy of midfield. Hit by Skip Thomas and also Monty Johnson. Stu not having an outstanding year. That's his 18th catch on the season. One of the reasons, though, of course, is when they picked up Bob Tucker, they put him in, in most, as a tight end in most of the passing situations. However, when the Minnesota team historically gets in trouble, they don't hesitate a moment to go into Stu. They'll spot it at the 49, first and 10. White in a slot left. Inside Bob Grimm. No 
Lester Hayes was right there, and then Jack Tatum came over to help out. Lester. He's learning, isn't he? Get deeper than the deepest. Take a look at it again. Shades of last week, except this one went incomplete. Tommy Kramer cranks it up. Got a good strong arm. Lester got victimized last week. He got the coverage down pretty well. Just barely overthrown that time. Similar situation as last week, wasn't it, Ben? The yes, fourth quarter. They were trailing the 49ers 24 to nothing when Tommy Kramer came on, and did he come on? Three touchdown passes. Well, he tried to get one in a hurry, first and 10, so now it's second and 10 from the 49. White inside, Grimm to the right. Tucker, the tight end on the left side. Robert Miller had stayed back, and Kramer wanted to dump off to him, but there was tremendous pressure from Willie Hall. And he finally just threw it away. Miller was the closest man. And I did like the way he threw it away, too. Didn't risk getting an intercepted at all. Made no bones about it. Threw it in the vicinity of the receiver, but out of bounds. And we look on to Willie Hall. Willie's a better football player than I'd imagined to be. He's done well today. There are the conversions. Neither club setting the world on fire in that department. Third and 10 from the 49. Sammy Johnson and Robert Miller are the backs. Toomey, Pat Toomey was the one who put the slug on him out of Vanderbilt. He's only 6'6", 245. That's why they traded for him to get the big pass rush. They saw him play against John Cole for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, and they figured if such a situation came up in the playoffs and we needed a guy to beat Pittsburgh, this might be the answer. Al Davis picked him up or made a trade for him, and he has responded well. Look at that. That a boy, Pat. Boy, they really put the pressure with Toomey coming one way and Matusak the other. Kramer did well just to hold on to the ball. Neil Colsey at the 21. And Minnesota evidently recovered. Yes, they did. Let's take another look at Neil Colsey now as he tried to bring that punt upfield. Getting it kind of loose there. Sammy Johnson hit him first. And down under there, Matt Blair was the one who recovered the fumble for Minnesota. And there's Matt coming out. He has a habit of doing that. He's right there when the ball is loose. He's recovering a Neil Colsey fumble. First and 10 on the Raider 42. Miller and Johnson, the running back. Kramer had a double picked off by Skip Thomas, and he steps out of bounds. The pass was intended for Bob Tucker. Skip Thomas on Johnny on the spot as Kramer goes to the well once too often. Had that sideline and go. He's tried it twice today, but he's got to be able to take care of the free safety before you can do that. Didn't do it that time. He looked that way all the way. Well, that's the third interception. And Kramer now listening to Bud Grant. That's what he's in there for, to make his mistakes this week rather than next week. So Oakland, after fumbling, gets the ball right back on the Skip Thomas interception. And Mark Van Egan wrapped up shy of the 30-yard line. And the same fellas we've been talking about most of the day making the tackles. That would be Fred McNeil, along with Studwell, who's in there for Seaman. They're gaming on that side a little bit. Alan Page took an inside rush that time, trying to cut off that center's block and let Studwell roam and make the tackles like so many of the teams play the middle linebackers that way. Got a bright future, I would say. Jeff Seaman started the ball game at middle linebacker, and now Studwell getting a little extra experience. Second and eight from the 29. Van Egan. Boy, they were going after the ball. Fred McNeil down there at the bottom trying to wrestle the ball away from Mark Van Egan. And this is your life, Alan Page. <laughs> Coming in when you take that inside rush, if that left guard comes down on you, that's about what can happen. Collapse you clear on down the line. Uh, George Beeler, who put the slug on him, is another one of those giants up front. Page had to fend off Beeler, who weighs 270. Clarence Davis. A 
looks like he might have made the first down on that. He caught Page in a stunt that time, stunning outside, and Heller closes inside. That's the way it's supposed to do. One leaves the area, and the other one comes into the area. Fights off his block, does an excellent job. Been a heck of a football player for a long, long time. Eller that time able to take the block of Beeler, hit him right on the numbers. Carr was able to hold his ground and make the tackle. First and ten, Oakland on their own 38-yard line. Clarence Davis, good block by Van Egan. Oh, they told us before the game that you should watch how these backs block for each other. And Bud Grant has to like that. And they oh. sure do. Watch these backs now. Van Egan blocking this time for Clarence Davis. Okay, hooks that linebacker to the inside there. Couldn't have been done any prettier. Davis knew exactly to bounce that side. The receiver had attempted block downfield on Bobby Bryant, but didn't get much done. So Van Egan able to take McNeil out of the play. Allen Page fighting on a bullet down there, trying to hold his ground. First and 10 from the 49. Van Egan. Mark Van Egan out of Colgate. And of course, at Colgate, he made his presence felt because he was the first and only Colgate back to rush for 1,000 yards. When he came into the big leagues, he has been a workhorse. Mark Mullaney, number 77, just one year away from being a starter for the Vikes. He was a first round draft choice in 75. Here comes Van Egan. He has Beeler out in front. He knew up where the short. first down marker was, didn't he? He sure did. They had both Upshore and Beeler. The guards were leading the way. Watch it. Watch how he bounces outside. That's Mark Van Egan. Follows his block and waits for it. He could have cut it up that time, but he decided he saw some daylight on the outside. Now watch how he goes for those yard markers there. Lowers his shoulder and makes sure he gets it. You see it drop there? And then you get a report on that Los Angeles game. Yeah, they have suddenly broken it open. It had been 9 nothing since the first quarter. Hayden on a 13-yard run scored to make it 16 nothing. And Rod Phillips has just pushed one over from two yards out. And the Rams leading 23 to nothing in the fourth quarter. So it looks like the Rams have put two games back to back for the first time this season, I guess. Just a couple of inches for a first down, evidently. By the way, Van Egan now has rushed for 91 yards. He is the standout ball carrier. He has carried 25 times. And they're a very tired Minnesota Viking defense. Double eights, Allen Page. He's been scrambling in the NFL for 11 years. So just inches, third down. We'll see what the snake comes up with. Banasak. And he picked up the first down. Fantasy comes in the ball game. You know he's going to carry the ball. And he does it year after year, and he comes up with a big play. Short yardage situation. I don't know of anybody that can find the holes any better. Deep Fantasy. Fantasy has rushed for five touchdowns this year. He scored two in the Super Bowl against Minnesota. In fact, he has 42 touchdowns in his career. It's an Oakland record. So Pete Banasek knows exactly where to go with it. Yes, sir. Following the blocks of Dave Casper, who is an outstanding blocker, as well as a pretty nifty receiver himself. First and 10 from the 38. Here comes Banasek inside Davis's block. And a good play by Matt Blair to submarine and get him at the ankles. Blair, who recovered that fumble earlier, we mentioned how he's around the ball all the time. So far this year, Matt Blair has blocked four kicks, two field goal attempts, a point after and a punt, and he's recovered two fumbles. He has a remarkable knack for that. You have a remarkable knack for keeping up with all that, too. Yeah, you just go write it down, <laughs> write it down. <laughs> Second and seven from the 35. Branch in a slot right inside Boletnikov, and it's Banasak. He just followed Clarence Davis that Davis said right this way. Yes, sir. Follow the block of Clarence Davis. Let's watch it. Davis a block for anybody. Number 28. Watch how they follow it. You get the feeling that Minnesota is just being worn down by that offensive line of the, 40, I mean, of the uh, Oakland Raiders. Well, Bud Grant, implacable. Clarence Davis trying to get a breather. 
Carl Garrett, number 31, comes into the backfield for Oakland. Boletnikov wide right and branch left. So it's Banasak and Garrett back of Stabler. First and 10 from the 26. And that time, Banasak is wrapped up immediately. And the guy at the bottom, Fred McNeil. John Madden giving his great running back Mark Van Egan a breather along with Clarence Davis. We like the kid with Madden by his general appearance, but I'll tell you what, he's, you judge a coach by one thing, and that's his one loss record. That's the winningest coach in football. One of over about 79% of his game, 78% of his game. That speaks enough for him. Another note on Madden, he was born in Minnesota. Second and 12. Banasak hit by Studwell, and so Scott Studwell getting a lot of experience and Jeff Seaman spotting there's a flag on the play. Offsides, Minnesota. Offsides, number 81, defense. So Carl Eller trying to get a jump. Seven minutes and 33 seconds left to go in this one. Oakland seven minutes away from the wild card. And for Minnesota, trying to heal and get ready for a most important game next week for them with Detroit. They don't look like a team that's going to panic, do they? No. Getting ready for the, the Lions next week. There goes Van Egan. Got to the 20-yard line. Van Egan, now a workhorse, has carried the ball 26 times. What we say uh, Walter Payton carried the ball today for about 36, I think. 34, 36, yeah. Payton has rushed for over 1,800 yards now with one game left, and that'll be next week. We'll see him go against the New York Giants. I can't wait to see him. I really like to watch that boy play. He is something else. So a third and three for Stabler. From the 19. And it's Van Egan. And he just runs over people. And he's finally brought down by Tom Hannon. Big blocks there by Henry Lawrence. And let's take a look at it. Lead block in there. Who was that? 46. Bankston. Bankston. And Van Egan now 27 carries for 104 yards. Payton had 32 carries this afternoon. Walter Payton did. The first and 10. The ball on the 11-yard line. And Oakland thoroughly control of everything right now. Van Egan inside the five. So Mark Van Egan. Let's watch Dave Dalby, number 50. Oh, he just rides Alan Page completely out of the play. Dave Dalby, number 50, only the second center in the history of the Oakland Raiders. Jim Otto played there so long. Dalby's got a great future himself. So Tom Hannon goes out of the ball game. It is second and two. Garrett. Just about to the line of scrimmage. Five minutes and 28 seconds left to go in the ball game. John Madden and the Oakland Raiders are going to win the wild card. And Bud Grant and the Minnesota Vikings must wait another week. Mark Van Egan getting an ovation as he comes jogging off the field. 28 carries for 112 yards and one touchdown. Four-year man out of Colgate. Third and one. In motion, Bankston. All alone is Carl Garrett to make it, and then Matt Blair on top of it. And it's a route, boys. It is 34 to 7. All he wants to do is win. He has a way, though, when he decides to throw the football, which is what he does best, of course. He can't put the hurts on you. Carl Garrett all by himself out there before Matt Blair. A little bit too late. He's in the end zone already. Well, in the Super Bowl, to refresh your memory, Oakland beat Minnesota 32 to 14. 
They're now leading 34 to 7. Errol Mann trying to make it 35. And he does just that. So we have four minutes and 51 seconds left to go in the ball game, and it is all Oakland in capital letters. Probably unprintable in the state of Minnesota. It is 35-7 Oakland, 4.51 left. And Manfred Moore sees the ball bobbled and then picked up by Mark Keller. And Keller gets to the 25, and that's it. But Keller seeing a little bit of service handling that. And here come the Vikes to put it in play. First and 10 on their own 26-yard line. Again, another report from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Atlanta gets on the scoreboard. However, the Rams leading handily 23 to 7 in the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 26. Here comes Sammy Johnson. And he gets out across the 30-yard line. So Minnesota will have the distinction of being chewed up in two coliseums this year. They say they just went out of here alive. Back up, back home to that freezing weather where they're going to practice in, what, in the armory again. Oh, they'll be indoors, I guess. When they left home yesterday, they told us it was nine below. Ain't nothing too much to look forward to going home to, is it? Second down, five from the 31. Robert Miller buying a very tough yard at best. Meanwhile, Jim Turner has just kicked a 36-yard field goal, and Denver has turned it around to lead San Diego 10-9. Just a couple of minutes ago, San Diego had an edge, 9-7. Third and five from the 31. Wide left, trim right. Off the hands of Sammy Johnson. So for Bud Grant, very early, we have not seen Ahmad Rashad, we have not seen Jeff Seaman, and now suddenly we are not going to see Foreman or McClanahan. We're seeing Miller and Johnson and young Tommy Kramer. And the Vikes unable to do anything with 332 left, and they'll be punting to Neil Colsey. Well, the poise of the Vikings, they're not going to go crazy over a loss like this and let it ruin their entire season. They all of their season is next week to get the playoffs. And they're saving everybody for that ring, keep them healthy as they can. Bud Grant's no fool by any means. Funny looking kick. There it was. Colsey backing up. There's no reason to run it as it rolls inside the 20 yard line. And it's down on about the 15. So with 321 left to go in the ball game. 35-7 Oakland. Thinking of that line, we have met the enemy, and they are us. You got it. That would be Minnesota today. Mike Ray with Garrett and Robisky in the backfield for Oakland. And it's Terry Robisky out to the 17-yard line. Mike Ray out of USC. He's had two years there. He spent three years with Toronto in the Canadian Football League. His biggest moment, he beat Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. A very good field goal kicker. Also point after. Ray, R-A-E. Six feet, 190, 26. Well, Ray is playing and the snake is resting with a job well done. Second and eight. And there goes Kyle Garrett. Studwell almost stripped the jersey off him. So Scott Studwell, along with the rookie Tom Hannon, in on the tackle. Well, the Vikings getting some young men a little more experience, and Garrett left to leave because of the torn jersey. Kenny Stabler, number 12 on the helmet, talking to Mark Van Egan and also to Pete Banasak. And coming over is Carl Garrett. And there, the Minnesota defensive team with young man Scott Studwell in the middle playing for Jeff Seaman. Alan Page, Carl Eller, Jim Marshall. It's been a long day for them. So it's a two-minute warning. 
Oakland 35, Minnesota 7. Mike Ray in charge of the responsibility of calling the plays for Oakland. He has Robisky and Hugh Begin in there now. Morris Bradshaw and a slot left inside the left McCarr. Here goes Robisky. And down it goes the first and fumble. And it right looked like he handed the ball off. I think they will call somewhat like a forward handoff against James White. Looked like rugby. <laughs> What's the scrum developing here? First Terry Robisky out of LSU. Yes, he is. Good old Cajun name, too. There right? goes the ball. There's White. Now watch him hand it forward. The scrum is on. Here we go. Yeah, somebody Push. take Get this. Get those <laughs> Mulaney, you take it. And then, just for good measure, it looked like Mulaney fumbled. That's it. First that down. handoff from White to Mulaney. The illegal forward pass. It was an illegal juggling act is what it was. Well, maybe something good can come out of this. You know, often in defeat, you learn more than when you win. Learn more when you're doing something that how to correct it when you're doing something wrong than when you're doing it right. I don't know what all that means. It means what? Throw deep? Throw deep. First and 10 for the 19. And Kramer back in there. To Robert Miller. And he goes out of bounds inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Ball game produced by Robert Stenner. Directed by Tony Verna. Our thanks to our statistician, Dr. Bob Woods, and along with all of the other people who have helped to get us on, keep us on, and hopefully get us on. Soon. To the 13-yard line of Oakland. Second and about four. And Barnes chasing him out of bounds. So Kramer outrunning him for safety. Tommy Kramer, 22 years old out of right. Now look at Kramer right now. Everybody's covered on the thing, and he is not running to try to advance a football. He is trying to get out of bounds before he gets killed. <laughs> exactly. That's something as plain as that. Yes, thank you. With John Matusak at 6'7 and 270, the adrenaline was sure pumping. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm getting out of here. I'm making good time. So it's third down and two from the 11. There's big John Matusak. He once played for two teams the same week when he was down in Houston. Off the hands of Craig. And then Craig tackles Skip Thomas to make sure he couldn't catch it. Thomas said, well, now isn't that enough? Take a look at it again. Tommy Kramer got a nice delivery right over the top. The ball should have easily been caught, but was not. Too late to nitpick now. And, and how? One minute, 35 seconds left to go in a ball game that saw Oakland just keep recovering fumbles and pile up a 21 to nothing lead. Minnesota came back 21-7, had a pretty good drive going on, but then gave the ball up on a Minnesota interception by Oakland. And really, the Vikings have not been heard from since. All right. They heard from that time. Touchdown to Sammy White. Sammy White, eighth touchdown pass of the year. Sammy has had an outstanding season as he did last year. He's caught a pass, at least one pass in every game this year. Now you see Tommy Kramer with a play action fake there. Drilling it in, and something good's come out of it. Maybe it built his confidence a little bit for next week. So it is 35 13 in favor of Oakland. Fred Cox, who is second in NFL history in points, Blando with 2002, and he missed it. Is that ever a summation of a frustrating afternoon? He has not been hitting it well this year. And both teams line up to receive, you've got problems. In the first quarter, it just kept on getting worse. It was Murphy's Law and Schultz's Law all put together, wasn't it? 
Carl Garrett, and you begin standing back waiting for Fred Cox. And here comes the onside kick for Mercer. Smothered and recovered by Oakland. That was the onside formation, scoot and body left, that worked once against San Francisco. Watch everybody Watch load up. The chorus line going left. Oakland was prepared to it as you see him slide there. They're a well-coached team. The fact is, you have to give both teams credit for their organization. Minnesota has won every division since, except 72, since 1968. On the other hand, the Oakland Raiders are the winningest team in football, and there's a very good reason why. And that's one of them, too. Otis Sister, Al Davis, the guiding hand, and what he's done. Whoa. First and 10 from the 46. And Robisky, finally brought down by Mark Mullaney. And at the bottom is Tommy Hannon, with a minute and 20 seconds left to go. You know, there are two McClanahan's in the ball game, and that onside kick was recovered by a McClanahan, Randy McClanahan, a rookie for Oakland, and there he is. Went to school in southwest Louisiana. You know a lot about Brent. The first look at Randy. 59 seconds mercifully left in this one. 35-13 Oakland. Second and seven from the 43. Mike Ray at the wheel. And it's Robisky following Ginn's block. And Wally Hilgenberg tries to make a pretzel out of it. Hilgenberg, in his 15th year, it's a tough time to be playing, especially if you're on defense with a losing team. Neither team wants to be on the field right now. They want to be in the locker room. Why get hurt in something like this? The game is already settled. Those of them got to look forward to next week and hopefully the playoffs. And, of course, again, to repeat, Oakland, they are going to the playoffs as the wild card team. Their victory, coupled with New England's victory over Miami, Madden and company, they're in business. What did Vince Lombardi say about that? Some of us will do our jobs well and some of us will not, but we will all be judged by one thing, the results. And John Madden's results are, well, a winning as coach in football. Forever. How about that San Diego? Update us on that, Ben. Well, the latest thing, Denver, you know, at one time was behind. However, they are back to their old histrionics and dramatics, and this time Rick Upchurch just went 19 yards to put Denver out in front comfortably by eight now, 17 to nine, and there's only a minute and 54 seconds left in that one. There's 37 left in ours, and Terry Robisky with Sylvester leading the way, picks up a couple. Steve Sylvester. Number 66, the third-year man out of Notre Dame, and he's another big lineman. But we're seeing a lot of people get some experience. Bud Grant has taken off his headset. He doesn't want to listen or talk to anybody. All in the dogs, the hunt is over, as someone once said. Stand around in the sands, go running through the hourglass. This one is history. And the Oakland Raiders continue their supremacy and mastery over the Minnesota Vikings as they take them apart 35 to 13. A great part of the Oakland victory because of Minnesota's fumbleitis. You got it. So this has been Scully for Alex Hawkins, and there's the final 35-13 Oakland over Minnesota.